Today we're going to show you a complete shoulder examination. How quick and how easy a shoulder examination can be done in your office for the four or five common pathologies that you're going to see. Andrew here is going to be our model. Andrew's right shoulder bothers him, not his left. Stand up here a second, Andrew. Come on over here. And the first thing you want to do in a shoulder exam is normal range of motion. Have him do it, active range of motion. Andrew, both arms out to the side, up to the sky, as high as they'll go. 180 over 160. Record that in your notes. Relax. How about that same thing, both arms all the way up to the sky in front of you. Forward flexion. 180 over 100, maybe 50 degrees. Forward flexion. Record that in your notes. Relax. The other ranges of motion that are important in the shoulder are combination motions. Let's look at abduction, external rotation. Take this hand and comb the back of your hair. Abduction, external rotation. He has full external rotation. But look at his humeral chest wall angle. This is for him normal. Relax. Now do the injured side. Comb the back of your hair all the way in the back. Look at the difference between his humerus chest wall angle here. Much more acute. A positive thing to put in your notes. The most important range of motion of the shoulder is the adduction internal rotation. Take this arm and crawl up your back. This is the way his mama made him on this side. Relax. Now do the injured side, adduct, internally rotate. As far as he can go, relax, is about a hand's breadth different, non-injured versus injured. That should be in your notes as being important. The remaining portion of the shoulder examination is done with the you behind the patient. Arms down by your side, arms fully supinated. The first bony prominence you feel on anybody's chest wall is the coracoid process. The next bump laterally is your biceps tendon. Feeling the non-injured versus the injured side should be painful for the patient. Positive bicipital groove tenderness. Put that in your notes. How about strength testing? Arms all the way up, palms to the ceiling again. Pure biceps function, two finger breasts at the elbow. Push down equally, and the right side, the injured side, should slowly give way if there's bicipital tendonitis. Now let's look at AC joint sprain, or you more commonly know it as shoulder separation. The bony bump on the non-injured side versus the bony bump on the injured side may be a difference. How if we push on it or palpate it, you'll notice a difference in volatility and it will be painful. This is an AC joint sprain. Now let's look at two other common diagnoses we see in the shoulder, impingement syndrome or slap tear. The adduction internal rotation maneuver should be positive in both of those pathologies. One has to control the injured arm and always compare it to the uninjured side. Elbow to elbow, hand on his wrist. Now I have complete control of what I want to do with his right upper extremity. And by adducting, internally rotating, and then elevating his elbow to his nose, this should produce pain. If that doesn't produce pain, a little flick of the wrist after will produce pain. That's a positive adduction internal rotation test. If you can't do that or there's a mismatch between a large patient and a small doctor, have him do scratch your back. He's done 90% of the work for you. All you simply do is elevate his elbow to his nose and that will momentarily give him a pain also. You'll get to do that once, not twice, I promise. The patient won't let you. Now let's look at the last pathology in the shoulder and that's the rotator cuff tear. Very common problem. Bony prominence, you know where a patient's acromion is. One finger breath down is where you're gonna put the most common rotator cuff tear right under your thumb. By controlling the arm again, this time you abduct and externally rotate. With your thumb right there, palpating deeply, you can make the torn rotator cuff hurt, posterior cuff tenderness a very positive sign for rotator cuff pathology. Now we can test motor function of the rotator cuff. Elbows bent 90 degrees, palms face each other. Test left versus right. Push my fingers away hard, hard, hard. You can see how I can break him with two finger breaths on that side. 
And the one test we all know, empty the Coke can sign, arms out in front, spread them apart 45 degrees, thumbs down, empty the Coke can, two finger breasts at the elbow, push down, and on the injured side, one should have a slow give way of a weakened or pathologic rotator cuff. That's the complete shoulder exam. Thank you.